Alrighty, let's get stuck into reading. Let's do What's it. Up? This is Power Up, playing, watching, reading, and we are talking reading here. What's up? My name is Maud Garrett, and we've also got Trisha Hirschberger here, where we Hi. talk all about what we are currently reading. But to get stuck into some reading news, please welcome Amy Cassandra Martinez from Geek Bomb. Yay. What kind of news has been happening? You know, with all of us in quarantine, a lot of people are getting very creative. They're going live a lot on Instagram and different social media platforms. Like, well, look at us. Um, one person that people are very pumped to see online is LeVar Burton, uh, reading Rainbow. So you can see uh, the image that's gonna pop up. Uh, yeah, he's going live and he's streaming and he's reading. It's, it's basically like he's bringing back Reading Rainbow to all of our screens. So um, you can watch on Twitter at LeVar Burton. So there's children's uh, selections that he's reading. There's young adult selections. And then there's adults as well. So Fridays at 6 p.m. Pacific time, um, that's where the adult reading will be happening. He said, this is something I love doing, reading aloud. That's what I am. I am a storyteller. I believe stories have the power to bring us together. Clearly, there is a need, which I love that. I mean, hey, that's what it's all about. And I think that there couldn't be a better person to be doing that. You know, I didn't personally grow up with reading Rainbow, but I know a lot of people did. And just to kind of get back to that mentality of like, look, let's just gather around and listen to LeVar Burton tell us. I did. I grew up with LeVar Burton's uh, Reading Rainbow. And also, I have to say, shout out to LeVar Burton for being persistent. Because this man has been trying to bring back Reading Rainbow for like 15 years. Um, he did a Kickstarter to bring back Reading Rainbow that like they got funded. And then I forget which network was like, um, you don't own Reading Rainbow, LeVar Burton. P.S. You can't just bring back a show that you don't own the rights to. Oh, and so then that on. whole thing petered out. Like he's had so many failed attempts to bring back Reading Rainbow. So um, this one, if it, if it is on his Twitter and he's calling it LeVar Burton Reads. Yeah. I would imagine this can actually happen. I didn't grow up with it. Uh, TLD dubs. What, what is it? I'm guessing it's a dude who reads books. Yeah. Good. He, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you he pretty much like got it. He looks like a legend, it. too. He's a very when was it on air? Dude. He's the Bob Ross of reading. Oh. Reading kids' books. Someone asked me to sing the theme song. Uh, obviously, I can't do that. Trish, take it away. I don't... Uh, Give a look, it's in a book. Reading Rainbow. That's, like, all I remember from it. Um, oh. But, yeah, it was very cute and old school and lovely. Mm -hmm. We have play school in Australia and they would read a book and I got so obsessed at the notion of holding the book out to a camera and turning the pages. And so every time I read a book as a kid, I would hold it out and read it to a pretend audience. Mark my words. I don't know if I've got any Aussies in the chat. Mark my words. If I ever do go home, I want to host play school so bad. You're supposed to watch it from like two, one or two to like seven. I watched it till I was 12, which is way too old. It's like, move on. Ma, I that is it. That is the cutest book lover version of today's kids that play video games while pretending to be streaming. Apparently that's a thing from like my friends who have kids that are older than my tiny human, where they're just playing Minecraft and they're like, and now I'm going to go over here and blah, 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 because oh, they watch that's so That's kind of scary. Right? Because they watch so many streamers. That they're emulating just, that. Are we removing privacy from them? Like they constantly think that there's people around. I guess I did it, but I was pretending to read to a camera. Right, you were pretending to read to other people. And I think they're doing the same thing. I think they're pretending to game as a form of entertainment for other people. And I've heard this from like so many different people. So it's not even just like, at first I thought it was like one friend's kid that really wants to be an entertainer. And then I realized <laughs> it's like everyone's kid. That's right. just how it is now. It's I have to I have to get this out because one, two Christmases ago, three Christmases ago, my mom sent me a bunch of Star Wars books, click, click, click on Amazon and sent me stuff. And they arrived and she's like, what do you think? And I was like, well, mom, I think that I'm not five. She sent me, oh my God, this will be worth it, I promise. Children's books. So, here we have Chewie and the Porgs. Ooh. 
by written by Kevin Shinnick and illustrated by Fiona Hirsch. 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 So I have children's books that I sh I might read eventually in story, but I'm practicing my whole life at this moment where I can hold the book open in one hand whilst reading it. And on this planet stands the very first Jedi temple. Wow. My mom got a 31-year-old woman children's books for Christmas. I love it. We also have ABC 3PO. If, if we're looking for more Star Wars kids books, I could nerdy kids books all day. Well, if you need some more <laughs> from me to you, actually from my mum to you. Um, my, I don't know if you know this, but my nephews are called Arthur and Charlie. So I call them R2 and C3. Nice. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love that. I love it. Uh, so that's, that's the... Reading news. Let's yeah, get stuck Amy, into it. Thank you so it, much Shish. for the news. I love it. That was great. Reading Rainbow. Amy, come in. Amy, what are you back. reading? I am reading. Um, you know the rundown. Um, that I helped create. Um, for you guys. <laughs> I honestly, I've been focusing a lot on playing and watching. What so, are you playing? A lot of games on my phone. A lot. Cooking Diary. Like my gosh. I'm talking hours, hours. This is who I am now. Is that a free to play with in-app purchases? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's like Diner Dash, which was my jam, like several years ago. I don't know why, but yeah. Yeah. So I have the same thing. I ran a salon for like three years. Oh my gosh, it was an efficient system. Hoo -hoo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you just take. Yeah. The no, three of us are all the same personality type that like those like getting organized, getting stuff done games. I can have two people in the massage chair while I have three people getting a pedicure and get it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crap, there's there's a salon as well. Oh, so yeah. I'll try and find that one. It's still good is my guess. But I played that one like, gosh, 10 years ago. I got obsessed. Um, what are you good. watching? Oh, my gosh. A lot of movies, but binging community. Um, I have started it from the beginning, and I'm little. I'm like halfway through a, a season one. Which was this is inspired crazy. by last week's episode, Amy? Um, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Because I had started it, but I was like, okay, I'll come back to it. But you guys just talking about it, and Anthony talking about, it, I was like, okay, I gotta commit to this. This is my job right now. Let's do this. Let's take it seriously. I also started watching Mad Men um, again because I've never seen it before, but I've, I've no, seen neither. the pilot twice. <sighs> it's really good. I've seen the pilot once. Uh, guys, if you want to know more about community, it is our last episode. So check out the last week's watching with Anthony Carboni for all of that. Um, mm -hmm. Shish, what are, Shish, what are you reading? Uh, let's see. I am reading. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, this is not what I'm currently reading because I'm currently reading The Hobbit. But again, since Maude and I are twinsies, I didn't want to double down on that. Uh, so I picked one of my other favorite books that I read recently called You're Never Weird on the Internet Almost by mm. my buddy Felicia Day. Um, and it's such a fantastic book about just being a kind of awkward person that doubts themselves and doing this crazy internet job. And so I don't know if I had a real special place in my heart. I'm sure I did for it because this is also what I do for a living. But I think especially for people that don't do that for a living, they might find like it as like a really interesting window into mm -hmm. what that life is like. And I feel like it's just a very good like when you're a normal person or even a kind of nerdy, awkward person and then you have this weird job where you are suddenly pretty known online, here's what that's like. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a fascinating read. Uh, there were moments in it that I literally, and I didn't want to be creepy because she talks about stuff that happened in her childhood and stuff, but there were moments that like, I wanted to text her and be like, are you okay? I know that was like 40 years ago, but like, I just finished this part of your book. And <laughs> I did not do that because I thought it'd be creepy. But anyway, highly recommend that book. If you get it on Aww. Audible, she narrates it herself, which makes it even better. Um, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, but I really, really liked it. And this is the first of two books she has out right now. She has a more recent book that's about finding your creativity. If you do want to make content online, like how you go about figuring out what that is and what it looks like. But Man, uh, um, the kind of the autobiographical book is You're Never Weird on the Internet Almost. And I loved it. So I do this for a living and I couldn't put that into a book. Yeah, well, she's also a writer. 
Uh, like that's also what she does for a living at least part of the time i don't like writing yeah no i don't i don't really love writing either no. but felicia is a really good writer it's very very funny and the prelude the the or the is that it's called a prelude in a book right forward forward the forward is um oh my gosh i just lost josh name. whedon it says josh it on whedon. the graphic thank you yes, <laughs> I, gotcha. by josh I, gotcha. I was gonna be like buffy marvel <laughs> Oh, I would have, yeah. No, that's good. I would have got it. And he's always on a dance floor every party I've ever seen him at. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. Loves, mm-hmm. loves a boogie. I love it. All right, tell us how you're feeling about The Hobbit right now, Maude, because you said you hadn't read it before, right? I have never read it before. Um, so I physically read up until Chapter 7, and then I jumped over to the audio book, actually, and I've listened to another three from that um, because it's not super, super old school where it sounds like someone's yelling into a record player um so i've been enjoying i think i'm enjoying listening to it more than reading it because it is written like you're reading a story to someone so i think the audible version of that is so much better um i am a little bit frustrated and i spoke all about it on nerdist book club because we are covering this uh six chapters at a time i'm a little bit frustrated with the how Tolkien has written this, but I am understanding that it was 1937. He's a linguist, uh, not necessarily a, a fictional writer, mm-hmm. and he was writing it for his child. So with that in mind, I've taken a lot more sort of like creative license and liberties for the structure of it, but the structure is like whiplash because he'll be talking about something and then he's like, oh, but I, you'll hear more about that later. Uh, then let's go back because this is what's happening now. And you're like, what? is happening in the story um so that's why i've gone to listening to it because i speed read and speed reading is no good with this particular book but i will also say i'm always such an advocate of reading the book before watching the movie in this case watching the movie has helped me with reading the book because Mm. you are thrown in with 13 dwarves and the only distinguishing feature is their name and one of them's chunky and that's kind of it so knowing who some of the characters were in the movie is helping me actually navigate the story yeah. more. Tolkien gives everybody like five names. It's yes. very frustrating. When you get into Lord of the Rings, it is, and if you read the Cimmerillion and some of the other uh, like ancillary Tolkien works, then it gets even worse. Because you Good. think, you're like, well, what about this person? And then he calls them by something else the whole next chapter. And yes. so then you think it's a new character, but then you realize it's the same character he was talking about before. They just have other names. A different name now. Yeah. Now he's already doing that with the wargs and wolves. They're wolves one second and then they're wargs the next. And I was just like, mate, is it a new species or is it, you know, like help me help you kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, but also I get frustrated reading this wondering why on earth it was made into three movies and i'll read like a tiny passage where it was like walked through the hills and we could have gone and gotten lost but we chose the right path and then i was like yeah but in the movie that would have been 20 minutes to try and find that right path that it took you three sentences to get through yeah the hobbit's pretty succinct and they did make it into three movies that i heard this is what peter jackson said at a press junket and i i like it i know it's probably just studio bs but I like it. Um, He said he didn't want Bilbo's story to feel less important than Frodo's. And he thought if cinematically Frodo had three movies and Bilbo only had one, then Bilbo's story would feel less important. And as someone that is a huge Bilbo stan, I was like, okay, okay. Like, we put things in there that didn't need to be in there and we cut stuff out of that that shouldn't have been cut out. And, you know, it probably would have, well, not even probably, it definitely would have made a better one movie. But, like, let's make Bilbo's story more important. Also, the more Middle Earth you want to put on screen, the more I'm okay with it. Like, give me... I am seeing that. <laughs> it's, yes. Yeah, so, like, the I have the Hobbit trilogy, a Blu-ray extended edition, and I watch it frequently. And I know, I know those movies are not good, but it is Middle Earth on screen, and Martin Freeman is an amazing Bilbo, and Benedict Cumberbatch is an amazing Smaug, and there are some lovely moments in those movies um and and just put me in the shire the more i can be in the shire the happier i am i mean Um, i like what hobbits are all about they eat a lot all the time they have polite niceties and then they get back to eating some more in their house and then they might have a smoke after like i mean i feel like i don't even smoke but 
that lifestyle I could be completely about. Oh yeah, um, they're just not into adventure. So like you, you're very comfortable with what you have. You don't want to risk anything. That's the only thing that I'm like, oh man, I if I could get he just, needed like, a an adventure. adventure. Yeah, he needed an adventure. It was time for that to happen. Uh, I just I heard a different reason why there were three movies, and that was because the studio was basically going to go under, and the only property that they had was that. And Ugh. for them to kind of like see the green and get through it, they had to. It was going to be two, but then they were like, "Ah, no, nah, we need to make it three, make it uh, happen." No, don't break yeah. this for me. That's okay. I'm I'm just gonna live with my the more middle mirth, the merrier. All right, let's get into some bombs away Q and A. Yeah, let's do it. Yay! Okay, so this question is from Patreon. Uh, Geek Bomber Adam Tulos, Twitch viewers slash watchers, please um, throw us your questions as well. So he asked, which literary couple is your favorite and why? Is there a literary couple you wish were a couple, but it never worked out? Oh, I know. I can talk to Adam about this because he's reading the books that I put him onto, and he's so wondering whether it's Team Dorian or Team Kale. I am going to tell you right now, buddy. I won't spoil it for you, but I wish the Team Dorian spread its wings and flew. That's oh. all. He knows oh. what I'm talking about. No, what is that? I don't know. So uh, I'm reading a series called Throne of Glass, and the protagonist is... I can't even say the name without spoiling it, but she um, was kind of in a little bit of a triangle in book one, but then it kind of flourishes out. And there is a prince who has, I don't want to spoil it. Ah, oh, whatever. Okay. His ice is fire. It would have been really great together, but oh, I can't say anymore. Sorry, guys. Okay. Ah. Yeah. Uh, Read the books. Listen to them. They're amazing. I've been like, oh, pounding through them. I don't know if there's a like book ship that didn't happen in anything that I read. Most of the stuff I read, any of the ships you want to happen, happen. Hold on, in Hunger Games, did she end up with Peter or Gale? I've like forgotten. Oh, she ended up with Peter. There you go. Team Gale. And see, I'm Team Peter, so I was totally okay with that. I don't need that much bread. Well, here's why I'm totally Team Peter. Because okay. this is the TLDR version. There's actually a really, really awesome uh, <laughs> article written on this. But... Katniss herself is much more of a traditionally masculine archetype, and so yes. is Gale. And, and he's Peter, the stay-at-home dad. The traditional, more of the traditional feminine things, like the damsel in distress, she has to save him multiple times, blah, 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 so that they complement each other well, was the argument made in this article. And I was like, I can kind of buy that, but I am also a very strong, like I'm a, I'm a very big personality woman so not to say that I go for a more subdued guy but like if I was dating a guy that was like too strong in the same way as I was I don't feel like it would work and so that's kind oh, of why I'm thinking that's maybe why I'm Katniss and Gale didn't work out. Trisha that's why I'm still single I need someone that can handle it match it and then add to it. You're you're trying to ship Katniss and Gale but in your life. Yes. Uh, you got yeah you gotta Find someone that challenges you in all the right ways, but also compliments mm -hmm. you in all the right yeah. ways. So you're not just constantly. That's it. Is that so much to ask for? Yes, I understand that now. Yeah. Have we got one more question? We do from Twitch viewer. Where'd you go? Oh, um, I lost it. Okay, there it is. Ashalon6023. Have Trish or Maude uh, read the books or seen the Expanse series? Oh, T Boys just doubled down on that one. Um, I have definitely seen the Expanse series like a crazy person. Are we which, are we talking Hobbit or are we talking Hunger Games? Oh, the Expanse. The question it's, was the oh, Expanse. Oh, the Expanse. I've heard the expanded series. Um, oh yeah, no, I, I watched all of the Expanse. Yeah, that's. I'm like, no, the Expanse. It's great. It's like probably I the best sci-fi television series we have on TV right now in like the last five years, easily. Yeah, yeah I've recommended it to so many people. So. <laughs> Yeah, but I what have about not read the books, but they are on my not read the wish books. list. No, I haven't read the books. I don't know if I'm good at sci-fi books. I've read a handful, but I always usually go back into fantasy because I like to escape into that world a little bit more. But, I mean, it sounds like we've, this is why we do Power Up because it's all about those recommendations. So maybe that's something that I can do. Yeah, for um, sure. Guess we just dropped by. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Oh, Yay. Man. Hi, Zelda. 
Hi, yeah. Pepper. I, I wish I could be like, hey, guess you just dropped by. Yeah. And uh, But I don't have a fur baby, and my uh, my actual tiny human is not in the room, which Aww. it's a good thing he's not because he would have <laughs> taken over the whole episode. <laughs> Well, there you have it, though. That is our reading for Power Up this particular Friday. Um, if you are in the Twitch, hey, give it a follow. Give it a sub. Do all that fun stuff. If you're over at Geek Bomb, give it a subscribe. Dipped under 100 thou again, Amy, didn't we? <laughs> did you notice yep, that? Yep, we yeah. did. Mm-hmm. How fun. Yeah. A little bit of a That's sub great. cleanse. Yeah. So if you haven't done it yet, please do. <laughs> I want to hit 100,005 times. Do it. That'll be fun. Do yeah. It. it feels do good to do it. it so. You can do it. So, and folks, if you do want to watch these live in the future, you can do that on twitch.tv slash Trisha Hirschberger. That's where you do it live every Friday at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And then, yeah, you can always listen to it wherever you like to listen to your favorite podcasts over the weekend or find it on Geek Bomb's YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. That's it. And if you want to get questions in live during the show, you can do that in Twitch, uh, on the Twitch stream too. Or you can jump onto Geek Bomb's Patreon and any donation gets you questions in every single week too. Thank you so much for watching Power Up. Thank you, Amy, for joining us for uh, What's Going Off and Bombs Away Q&A. We'll see you guys next week with a special guest who we've kind of locked in. Uh, I don't know if I give a hint. No, don't give a hint. Okay. It's a total surprise. It's a total surprise. But, but it's someone Matt and I both know. Next week. Thanks so much for watching, guys. That's us done. Bingo. Bye-bye. Yay.